Jalen and Fun. The Clippers can take a 2-1 series lead tonight over the Warriors. Which was the last team to have a series lead against the Warriors in the first round? The last team to beat the Golden State Warriors in the playoffs. The Los Angeles Clippers. Yep. That's exactly right. Oh. It was the Clippers. If I had a bat, I would flip it. In the first round in 2014, <laughs> the year before, Steve Kerr oh, became himbo. the head coach. That's let's why Mark Jackson needs a head coaching job. Uh, let's look ahead to that game. Critical game three against the Clippers for the Warriors. Yeah, and a lot of attention has been focused on Patrick Beverly's impact on this series, especially his defense on Kevin Durant. I want you to hear the way Durant talked about this yesterday because I think it is fascinating on a variety of levels. Let's play that. They're playing a gimmick defense, which has been working, top blocking everything on the perimeter. So guys not even looking at the three-point line. They're just forcing guys inside the three-point line. So for us, when I get the ball in my spots, you know, I got a pest, Patrick Beverly, who was up underneath me. Well, I could definitely shoot over top and score every time if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. But we got a guy that's dropping and helping, and then we got another guy that's just sitting on me waiting, waiting for me to dribble the basketball. I'm not going to get in the way of the game because, you know, I want to have a little back and forth with Patrick Beverly, I'm Kevin Durant. You know who I am. Y'all know who I am. Uh, I love that line. There's so much to unpack in that, <laughs> Jayla. Let's start with the actual basketball piece of it that he's talking about, because we had this conversation here and on First Take the other day. Why doesn't he just shoot over Patrick Beverly? He's suggesting it's not quite that simple. KD is pissed, and he's scoring 35 against Patrick Beverly when they play again. That's what I saw in that video. Um, he's frustrated because he's thinking what I've been saying the entire time. I love Patrick Beverly. He's an irritant, and that's why he's in the league, because that's his style of play. However, we should be talking about KD versus Kawhi or KD versus Greek Freak, not KD versus Patrick Beverly. And a light switch went on to KD like, I'm Kevin Durant. Why am I even having this conversation? So he about to explode in the next game. Yeah, there is no doubt that Patrick Beverly is, is a guy that you don't want to face, but you do want on your team. I mean, he's annoying. He's a gnat. Uh, and I mean that in the most complimentary way possible. Uh, he's a guy that's going to help you win games and you try to get under the skin. What, what we just saw right there is just like the reestablishment to what you're saying of like, do you know how good I am? Do you know how elite and how special I am as a basketball player? That pause... That pause was more telling to me than the statement in itself Can where he say, stopped. Say one other thing, going back to the day that I grew up watching basketball and you grew up playing basketball, if the other team sent a guy like that after your best player, your team would have a guy who would take him out. Correct. Right? The, 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 the Warriors should Easy. have someone, Andrew Bogut or someone like that, set a very hard screen on Patrick Beverly. Right? Back in the day, it would have been even more than that. No question about it. And we just saw that happen in the Portland OKC game. Yep. When somebody Steve cracked, Adams. Steven Adams came mm -hmm. back and set a big-time pick. But here's the thing. Patrick Beverly isn't there for his offense. So it's kind of hard to really get back at him because he's not out there trying to score. But here's a style thing. This is something Doc Rivers did to KD when he played with OKC and had Chris Paul guarding him. And CP3 gave him problems, too. So KD has seen this before. Either way, I think we can all agree that Patrick Beverly is under KD's skin, at least in some way, <laughs> shape, or form. Other drama in the NBA playoffs between the Nets and the 76ers. And Nets guard Karis LeVert took exception to Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons laughing when Embiid apologized for elbowing Jared Allen after game two on Monday. It was kind of a lame apology. I think we can all agree on that. This is what LeVert said. We didn't really like that. We thought that was kind of disrespectful, especially after the elbow he threw. LeVert said after the Nets practice on Wednesday, it is what it is. There's no love lost. It's a playoff series. We expect that. You know, he's kind of downplaying it a little bit there at the end, Jalen, but it feels like this is chippier than maybe what he's alluding to. Correct. And I felt the way Karis felt when we first saw the post-game footage. I understand that things happen throughout a basketball game. So I don't think it was personal, but however, it was intentional. And it definitely was flagrant. So one thing about being a part of the NBA family is you don't want to see anybody get injured. And that play could have seriously got somebody injured. Jared Allen could have knocked his teeth out of his mouth, could have gave him a concussion. We don't know what lingering effects he actually had from that, though he continued to play. So it's rude to go to the press conference and make a joke about it. The Nets can't necessarily get a level of revenge like 90s basketball, 
But at the same time, I do expect people to be barking at Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons based on how they handled that. It's immature. I mean, their, their, their entire delivery during the press conference was immature. And this team, the 76ers, has shown immaturity where you're looking at cell phones on the bench during the playoffs. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, if you just go to a press conference and answer the question and Ben Simmons doesn't start snickering like he's a, a high schooler sitting next to Joel Embiid, then Joel Embiid doesn't laugh as well. And that's, right. the incident, that's, that's what causes this. When I saw that, I was like, oh, if I was on the Nets, one of them is going to get hit very early in, the, in, our, in our game back in Brooklyn. You know this. I'm going to tell you, what ended up happening is what was discussed away from the media came out in the press mm -hmm. conference. That's why Ben Simmons laughed. Because what happens on a play like that, you go back to the huddle and people are like, yo, 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 yo. And they're like, whatever. And so now all of a sudden you get to the press conference and you're trying to hold a straight face and you apologize and then he calls you on it. Ben Simmons That's is That's what it. ended up playing out. Ben, ben He's Simmons, an instigator. It, it, it's turning into a little bit of a problem. This is the same series in which he called out the Sixers fans and said, if you're going to boo, stay on that side. And then there was a moment in the press conference that Simmons had yesterday that was fascinating. I want you to hear this exchange with the reporter. You will hear the question about a game that Simmons missed during the season. Ben, uh, there was a story today in the New York Daily News that said you missed the Orlando game because you were out partying. And I just, you haven't commented on it. I just wanted to get your reaction. I'm not that. worried about, you talking about regular season? Yeah, the okay, most no, recent we're talking, Orlando We're talking game. about playoffs again. Unless you, unless you want to talk about something else, it's somewhere else, but Thank playoffs you. right now. So that's not quite the same. In case it wasn't 100% clear, he's being asked about a story that suggests he missed an NBA regular season game because he was out partying. And saying, I'm not talking about the regular season, is not the same as saying, no, that didn't happen. I didn't miss an NBA <laughs> regular season game because I was out partying. What do we make of this? So there are guys that can go kick it and get it in and stay out to 3, 4, 5 in the morning. Michael Jordan comes to mind. Yeah. Allen Iverson comes to mind. I'm very much that way. And <laughs> can still go out and perform at a high level. When you can't do that, you got to stay in your lane. And it sounds like in Orlando, Ben went a little too hard, a little too long. It can't now linger into the next day that causes you to miss a basketball game. So when you're asked about it in the press, you can approach it the way you just said and be like, that didn't happen. Or you can approach it like he did, which is now going to lead credence to the fact that it probably did happen. So now we're going to continue to discuss. What, what about okay, the way it, he laughed at first? Well, that's what I'm saying. Because like, if it didn't happen, like the first thing I would do is be like, what? Right. right? That'd be your initial response. What was his initial reaction on his face? <laughs> you got it. Like he went back and was like, that was really fun. <laughs> that was a great night. Man, I'd go back and do that night again. I mean, and that's the kind of like, when I look at that, I'm just like, again, it goes back to the mindset of this team. Okay, we are at a point now with the 76ers where we should be past the process. We should be past the whole idea of like, is this team good enough to advance in the playoffs and win significant like not just win a round, but two rounds. Can they get to a conference final? Can they win the get to the NBA finals? This is what the expectation should be with this roster and this team. They went out, got Jimmy Butler, they got Tobias Harris. But instead, what are we talking about in this opening series? We're talking about cell phones on the bench. We're talking about laughter at post-game press conferences. We're now judging and, and trying to read body language into whether or not you missed a game in the regular season with all these stories. And now is your coach on the hot seat? Do you have to? It's a mess in Philadelphia. I, I think that's right. And they should have been booed. And, and they should be booed right now, too. Of course. I Look, I mean, they're going to win this series. I don't think anyone questions that. But if it doesn't go any further than mm -hmm. that, I think there will be a lot of questions about that team. And many of them will be posed to the point guard who was supposed to transcend the sport and completely turn around the franchise. What, what a question is going to be, can these two guys stay healthy enough in MB, improve enough in Ben Simmons, in particular a jump shot, to actually lead the process to a championship? Yep. That question still lingers we'll in my mind. We'll start finding that out soon, and I'll remind you that we have a trio of playoff games on ESPN and ABC tomorrow night. Raptors Magic, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Then Celtics Pacers, 8.30. That's on ABC. And Trailblazers Thunder, 9.30 on ESPN. These are all critical game threes, and all three of them are also streaming live on the ESPN app. So if you're out and about, you can watch from anywhere. Coming up. The Browns are the new IT team in the NFL. Their newly released schedule proves it. We'll explain. This is Get Up on ES. Don't move. Don't 